Beginning a look at adult-sized doctrine in our favorite children's Bible stories. And of course, the creation is one of them, and the creation covers so much material and so much important adult-sized doctrine that we can't cover it in one sermon. So we have to go with Sunday morning, Sunday night, and next Sunday we'll even look at a few more things uh, from creation. But we're looking in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Would you stand as the scriptures read, please? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the lesser light to rule the day, uh, the greater light to rule the day, and a lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and divide it, the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Let's pray together, please. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the story of creation. We thank you as we look at the first things that we'd always put first things first in our lives, in our church, in our families. Teach us the things you want us to know tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The one thing that is noticeable through all of the creation story as we look at the doctrines or what God says about certain things is the power of God's Word. As we begin to look at the story of creation, Three words are mentioned. Then God said. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God said something and it happened. This is mentioned six different times through the creation. Then God said. Then God said. And six different times God ordered something done and it was done. The sheer force of God's word worked all of creation. As we talked about this morning, God spanning the heavens with his hand, he spoke it into existence. God's hand did not have to create the heavens. God simply spanned the heavens with his hand. That's how big God is. He spoke it into existence. If you look in the 33rd Psalm, chapter uh, verse 6,
David gives us a summary of the power of God's word in creation. The 33rd Psalm, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, and the plans of his heart to all generations. He says this, he spoke and the heavens were made. He commanded and it was done. Now this morning we looked at length of just how big the heavens are. Big, huge, mind-numbing of just light years and billions of miles and how small we are compared to the heavens. The Word of God did this. Then if you want to scale it down to something that's a little bit more comprehensible, understandable, it says he also put the waters together as a heap. Now water is powerful. Uh, if you ever watch videos of floods and you see just a little bit of water, what it can do, and when you talk about God moving the oceans and God separating dry land from the oceans and the word of God The sheer force of the word of God moved tons of water, millions of tons of water. The sheer force of his word. He said it and it was done. And then we have the steadfastness of his word. It says, of course, right here, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. As we mentioned this morning, there are those who would like to do away with God's word. They would like to deny God's word. They would like, of course, to ridicule and to discredit God's word. That has been going on since God's word was pinned in paper and carved in stone thousands of years ago. Each generation that tries this thinks they're coming up with something new, something clever, something nobody else has thought about as they challenge God's word. Intellects, thinkers, academics, philosophers have come and gone, all of them that have attacked God's word, and God's word still stands. The greatest empires on the earth banded together to put their their force together to eliminate and wipe out God's word, and it still stands. Empires are in the dust. On the pages of history, they don't stand anymore, but God's word still stands. It is permanent. It is steadfast. It is forever. If you look in the 119th Psalm, verse 89, something we notice about the 119th Psalm is the whole Psalm is about God's Word, all 150 verses of the Psalm. And the psalmist writes in the 89th verse of Psalm 119, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, your word is settled in heaven. People may burn pages down here, but God's word is settled in heaven. And God's word will always stand. God's word will always be present on the earth. Didn't Jesus say it this way in Matthew chapter 24, verse 25? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Words will never pass away. That's the what. Here then is the so what in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24. This is where it gets personal. This is where it affects our lives. And Peter here is actually quoting Isaiah the prophet, but then he adds a little something that puts an exclamation point on this truth. 
Verse 24 of 1 Peter chapter 1. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Then it gets personal. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. You see, that's what makes it personal. The eternal, steadfast, powerful, forceful word of God is the word of, through which the gospel is preached to us. The same word that spoke the heavens into existence, that moved the seas away from the dry land, and the dry land appeared, that moved all that water. The same word that spoke all of creation into existence is the same word through which the gospel is preached. That's powerful. In fact, that's why the apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is simply the word of God. So did you catch that? God's word is power. God's word is personal. And God's word is that same word through which salvation comes to us. So then we have two th another thing here. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He saw the light, that it was good. He divided the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night, so the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, you read this, say amen, good thing. And then a little bit later on in verse 13 and 14, we see that then it talks about he created the sun and the moon. And we ask, didn't he already do that? And critics of the Bible will say, well, that's a big mistake. That's a big mess up. That can't be right. Looks like he's already created day and night and light and dark. And so we understand then he comes up and creates the moon and the sun and the stars. What's going on here? Critics might point to this as an error. And they might say it's that the Bible is flawed. But you understand the Bible by reading the Bible. And it all comes perfectly clear when you read the Bible and turn over the book of Psalms, chapter 104. This is another psalm that deals with the creation. And look at the detail as the psalmist outlines and praises God for creation. Psalms 104. We begin in verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty who cover yourself with light as a garment. Then it says, and you stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beam of the upper chambers in the waters. Who makes the cloud his chariot, walks on the wings of the wind. Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. You who laid the foundation of the earth so it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place that you have founded for them. You have set a boundary that they shall not pass over. He talks about the sheer force of God in creation, but notice what he says right at the very start. You cover yourself with light as a garment. God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was not the sun. It was not the moon. It was not the stars. It was God himself. God wears light as a garment. Now, when John began his gospel, he, of course, began his gospel back before creation. Notice what John says about creation in John chapter 1. We quoted part of this this morning, and we'll quote a little bit more of it this evening. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the light, the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 9, that was the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. Tied up in creation, as John spoke about the creation of the world and Jesus, the word of God being there at the point of creation, he says, and there was light, and he was that true light. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. So that's the what. Jesus gives us the so what. In Psalms chapter 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So it becomes personal. The strength of the word of God becomes personal. That's the word through which the gospels preach to you. The light of God, present at creation before the sun was even created, God himself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And if you'll follow me, you will not walk in darkness. So we have the first point, the word of God. The second point, the light of God. But then we have to make this third point. The two are inseparable. The two are combined. You can't separate them. 119th Psalm again, verse 105. Speaking of children's Bible stories, this is one that just about anybody that's ever been to Bible school or to Awana or, uh, of course, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Bible knows this past to Scripture. It's a good past to Scripture. What does the, the Bible say about the Word? 119, verse 105, Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a what? A light. Your word is a light. Why was there light present at creation? Because the word of God was present at creation, and the word of God is light. And it gets even better in the 130th verse of this same psalm. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. We're talking, of course, a lot of times about the light of the heart, the light of the mind. The light bulb goes off on your head, you know, and we realize we now understand some things because the entrance of your word. But here's what's interesting. This word, the entrance of your word, the Hebrew word, and it's, it's translated this in, in several other English translations. The Hebrew word for the entrance of your word, the unfolding of your word. Now, that's when it gets real personal. So I have the word right here. When I unfold it, it gives light. And there's where I get the light in God's word for my day, for my gloomiest times, for my direction. It's when I unfold it. And when I unfold it, then I have the light of the word. And then remember, what do we notice first? We have the power of God's word available to us. Didn't Isaiah say God's word will accomplish the purposes that he has? This is the word that we operate by. This is the word that we live by. So we go out of here living in light and living in strength as we're people of the word. Is there anything before we close?